again, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. I grow cut flowers in Zone 5A in Northwest Iowa that I sell at local farmers markets. And in this video, I wanted to give you guys an update of some of the seedlings that I have growing. Now, I currently have three full grow shelves, completely full of seedlings that will be ready very soon to be planted out in the garden. This is my newest grow shelf with a lot of seedlings that I just started, oh, about a week or even just two weeks ago. And so I thought it would be fun to show you the progress of all of these seedlings. And then I'm also gonna share what I'm gonna be planting out next in the garden. Now it is currently mid-April here in Northwest Iowa. We have had a super cold spring so far. Last year in March, I was doing all kinds of projects in the garden, um, restructuring some things. This year, I've hardly done anything. We have had nothing but cold temperatures, wind, we've had snow, rain lately, which the moisture is great because we have been in such a drought, but I have barely gotten anything done in the garden besides planting my ranunculus out. Um, but our temperatures are supposed to turn next week, and so I am going to be ready to get some of these out in the garden once I know my average last frost date is passed, which is usually about the 1st of May. So anyway, this is the grow shelf that I want to show you guys today, and as you can tell, the lighting in here is not ideal, so I'm going to take all of these out in front of the window light just so that you can see them much better. But the setup that I have is just a simple plastic shelf that you can get at any home improvement store. It's a 24 by 36 in size. I currently have three shelves full of seedlings and the lights that I use are shop lights. They are 4,000 lumen LED lights. I've been using this kind for two years of growing seasons and they work great and they're very economical. So for me, there was no need to get the fancy grow lights. These work just fine. All right, I'm gonna move my camera out in front of the window light and I'm gonna show you everything that I have growing on this shelf. So I have quite a variety of plants growing on this grow shelf here and mixed with all of the seedlings that I have on my two grow shelves at home, I'm gonna have such a great variety of flowers this season. This is just my second year growing cut flowers to sell at farmer's markets. I learned so much last year, and so I am adding a lot more variety into my cut flowers for this season. Um, so the first thing that I have on my shelf, this is Bupleurum, and if you watched my previous video, you know that I have been experimenting with a couple different ways to grow Bupleurum. This was an entire tray of 72 cells, and clearly I failed because I have about 11 plants left. I plucked them all out, replanted them, they're doing great. So this will be one nice little planting in my garden. My next tray is doing much better and I also will be direct sowing some as well. So between those three methods, I should have a nice stock of Bupleurum this year. The next item on my grow shelf is a couple of dahlias and they are putting some really nice growth on them. These were two tubers that I took out of the box of stored dahlia tubers that I put away last fall, and I took some cuttings from these. Now, I, I took cuttings from these quite a few weeks ago, and as you can tell, they're putting on some really nice growth already. I probably could go ahead and take more cuttings from these, although, at this point, I may just go ahead and plant these into the garden as is and see if I can get some really early dahlia blooms this year. Okay, so this tray is the first of three trays of zinnias. And typically in years past, I have just direct sowed my zinnias right in the ground, usually mid to end of May. Well, this year I wanted to get a big jump start on the season because last year the first farmer's market that I did wasn't even till around the 4th of July. And our farmer's markets in this area start the 1st of June. And sometimes those are the busiest markets because everyone is just so excited for summer. So this year I decided I was gonna start my zinnias inside. And I am really glad that I did. These look fantastic so far. Now this tray is all the Benneries Giant Series. I think I'm growing just about every single color of the Benneries Giant Series. Um, this particular tray has pink, white, coral, lime, lilac, yellow, which I have four rows of the yellow, and then salmon rows on the end. So this is my first tray of zinnias. 
Here is my second tray of zinnias, which is a little spotty in a couple of the varieties, but they're still looking good. This tray is um, half Benary's Giants. I have the orange, purple, wine, and salmon rose. Um, and red over here. And then these are some of the cactus zinnias, which I have Sun God, um, Lilac Empress, and Senorita. And if you haven't planted the cactus zinnias, that is something that you definitely need to try. They add such a great texture into the market bouquets. So tray number two, I'm going to go get tray number three. Okay, tray number three, also looking amazing. Now this is mostly queen lime zinnias. I have the queen lime orange, the blush, and the red. And then I do have a couple rows of the Benary's Giant mix on the end. But these also are all looking just fantastic. Now I should mention, I when I originally sowed all of my zinnia seeds, I put two seeds per cell. I have already gone through and thinned them down to just one seed per cell. And I also will be pinching these. Once they start to get their next set of leaves, I will pinch them down above their first set of true leaves. And pinching really helps on zinnias because that encourages branching, which gives you a lot more blooms. Zinnias are a cut and come again flower, so the more that you cut the flowers, the more blooms you get. So this is just a 24 cell tray. This is one of the um, seed trays that I get from Gardener Supply that actually comes with a wicking mat if you want to use it as a self-watering tray. Um, I don't have that in here right now, but I could easily add that if I wanted to. And this is a variety of different um, flowers that I wanted to just grow a few of each kind to try them out. Um, so on this side, these smaller plants, these are all gomfrina. Now I grew gomfrina last year. I grew way too much gomfrina. I quickly found out that I did not need that many plants for what I actually um, needed it for in my bouquets. Gomfrina is a workhorse. And so this year I decided I wanted to grow five different varieties, but I'm only growing two plants of each variety, which two plants will give you tons of blooms. So I have a purple, orange, white, raspberry, and carmine gomfrina. I'll use it as accent flowers in my bouquets, but then I also will be drying it to use in dried flowers. And then these are all marigolds, which marigolds is something I like to put in my fall bouquets. So I have a Kilimanjaro white marigold, a white swan, and then those giant orange marigolds. Now these also are not the short little marigolds that you would buy at the garden center that you can, you know, put in your landscape in your pots. These marigolds get very tall, um, like 30 inches tall, so they're perfect for cut flowers. And then this last row here, these are red spike amaranth, and I have just four of these plants. They're gonna be planted along my fence line. I also am going to be pinching these to get multiple blooms. I'm trying this out this year, so I think four plants is gonna be plenty. I just wanna see what I can get off of these. Okay, so the last shelf on that grow setup is not even for cut flowers. These are some seeds that I started to hopefully plant in my planter boxes out front of my business. These are petunias and they are looking absolutely amazing. So these seeds were originally started in the 24 cell tray, which is what I just showed you before. And these have been potted up into these four inch nursery pots. And I swear, I just planted these up a few days ago. I think they have already put on some growth. I think they're much happier. They were pretty rub bound in those 24 cell trays. But I have a burgundy and a carmine velour. And these seeds came from Select Seeds. And I am so excited to see how these grow this season. So um, this is one tray of petunias. And this is the second tray of petunias. And these are all white and looking great too. This is the 24 cell tray that the carmine and burgundy petunias came out of. Here's what's left in the tray that I still need to pot up into those four inch nursery pots. But you can see the size of the cell compared to the size of the pot and how much growth those plants have already put on. So in the next couple days, I'm gonna be potting these up as well. 
Okay, so that is an update on all of the seeds that I have just recently started. Now I have some direct sowing that I want to do very soon out in the garden. Now it, again, it is mid-April. Our average last frost date in this area is not till around the 1st of May, but I wanna go ahead and direct sow these seeds into the ground because most of these are known as cool flowers, which you can even put into the ground up to six weeks before your average last frost. Now, I have just been a little nervous because we have had such cold temperatures and so much rain and snow lately, um, but I am ready to give it a try. So I'm going to be direct sowing some Buplurum, which I already have those different um, seed trays going, but I wanna go ahead and direct sow some in the ground. Buplurum also is a one and done, so I wanna be able to have succession plantings of it. So I would be direct sowing multiple plantings anyway. Then I want to plant some cress. Cress is also a one and done plant, so you wanna have succession plantings of that. Um, this I want to have for a really nice filler throughout the summer. So soon I'm gonna be direct sowing that, um, and I will probably be direct sowing some maybe every two weeks um, for a few different plantings. I'm gonna put some dianthus seeds in the ground. Now at home in my other grow shelves, I do have a 24 cell tray of dianthus. I also would like to direct sow it and see how it compares. And then I have some nigella that I wanna try planting in the ground. I have never grown nigella before, but from what I have read, you don't necessarily grow it for the flowers. The pods are really good to harvest, kind of like poppies. So. I'm more growing it for the pods, not the flowers. That'll be a good experiment. So anyway, that is just kind of an update on my newest seedlings that I have started and what is coming next in the garden. I also have one more planting of ranunculus I need to get in the ground. I've been trying to get in the ground for like two weeks and it just kept raining and snowing. So I think the end of this week, I'll be able to get it in. They're definitely ready to come out of their trays. Then I'll be direct sowing these seeds. And then I also have um, a tray of stock that needs to go out in the garden and a whole tray of yarrow that needs to go in the garden. So I will probably be doing a video on those plants and the direct sowing all in one time. So watch for that next week. We'll see you soon.